Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hope Tri-Cities. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I am Bob Horn. I'm the executive pastor. I want to say happy Father's Day to you dads and spiritual dads. Yes, happy, happy Father's Day. Day. And I've got some friends with me here. We have our three summer interns that are going to be spending 10 weeks with us here at Hope Tri-Cities. I wanted you to meet them, so introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about where you're from and how excited you are to be here. Yeah. Hey, everyone. My name is Jose Mora. I'm from the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and I'm just super excited to meet every single one of y'all, hopefully on the West Lawn, um, and, you know, just get hands-on ministry experience and wisdom from, you know, Bob. The Bob. From the Bob. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alina, and I'm originally from Eugene, Oregon, and I'm really excited to just meet you all, hopefully in the lawn also, but also just through online platforms and um, just creating a new sense of family around Tri-Cities. Awesome. Hi, my name is also Alina, <laughs> and I'm from Yakima, and I am so excited to be a part of this church this summer and to get to know you all and um, learn more about uh, myself and God and just um, being in ministry. Awesome. So we are really glad to have them here. They're going to be doing a lot. When you meet them, please say hi, introduce yourself to them, encourage them, support them, um, love them well. And we're going to go into a time of worship. Alina, would you pray for our time as we get ready to worship God? Father, we just thank you that we get to worship you, that we get to um, have the freedom to do so, um, even if it's just at home. But God, I just ask that you bless this time in people's homes while they're watching worship and that they will just feel your presence so tangibly and that um, even on the lawn that we'll be able to experience um, the goodness of who you are and um, may healing just come. And yeah, we just bless this time and we love you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's worship.
pretend that we can't control the night or what kind of road we're on or where we will see the light but right now I'm talking to you I'm looking into your eyes right now I'm trying to show you that we're gonna be alright oh I don't know what's around the bend all I know is that my love it knows no end Hey, happy Father's Day. Uh, what a great day. I hope that you guys are being celebrated well. For those of you that are at the West Line, you're getting candy. If not, if, if you're at home somewhere, if you're a father, I hope that you're being celebrated there well. Um, I want to ask you guys to say something for me and with me. Say the word love. Say it again, nice and loud. If you're by yourself or in a room full of, room full of people, say love. Love. Yeah, um, you know... It reminds me the first time I said the words, I love you, to my wife uh, when we were dating. Do you remember the first time you said uh, the words, I love you, to someone? Well, I remember, I remember saying the words, I love you, to Laura. We were on a date. Uh, I was getting ready to continue to move the relationship forward. And, and I, wanted, I said, I, I think I want to marry this woman, but I want to tell her I love her first. And so we, we took this date. We drove from Renton. Uh, all the way to Leavenworth, and it was snowing, the lights were on. If you've ever been there during Christmas time, uh, it's a beautiful place to be. And we took a walk down by the river. And uh, there's a trail down by the river there at, at Leavenworth. And as we're walking down by the river, I finally just said it, I love you. And, and, she, and it kind of caught her off guard a little bit, and I got really excited. And I, st- I said, I love you, and I yelled it out. And there's some people that were walking by, by on this trail. We were kind of off the trail, and there's some people that were walking by the trail. Uh, they saw us, and I looked over, but they were going like this. They were like trying not to look at us. They were going like this, and, and, and I was like, what the heck is wrong with these guys? I'm over here celebrating, and they're trying to like, what, and I go, what? What's going on? I love this woman. And they, and they, they kind of they kind of looked, looked over and they and they they're like, oh, oh. Well, Laura was wearing uh, monochromatic, all tan, from head to toe. Well, basically from her coat, her pants, and her boots were all monochromatic tan. They, they, one of the guys goes, oh, I thought she was naked. And it, and I thought, what the heck would she be? Th- why would she be naked? I was just like, I don't know, but congrats, man. I'm glad that you love her. This is cool. But anyway, that was the, fr- the first time I said I love you to Laura was in that moment. I love you. Remember the first time you said I, the words I love you to someone? I think a lot of times when we use the, we use the word love, sometimes we use it flippantly. Like, like I love popcorn. Movie popcorn is so good, right? Or I love chocolate peanut butter ice cream, or I love that song, or I love this music, and, or I love the smell of these candles, right? We use these words, like I love, and, some, and we use that appropriately. I think it's okay to use those words I love, but, and it means different things in different situations. Love. Last week, we started talking about how we as a church, we're, we're called to love radically. We're called to love with force, right? We're walking through a series called Back to the Church, and we're looking at the original design of the church, what it's supposed to do, that we're supposed to, to, to create disciples. We're, we're called to, to share the gospel with urgency, with great love. Uh, we're, we're called to, to greatly love one another as believers. Like we, the church, ought to love each other radically. We're called to, 
to share our lives with each other and, and walk in fellowship. We're called to, 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 for the common good of one another, share our gifts that God gives us, spiritual gifts that he gives us. We share that common good with one another. We're called to love. And I believe through the context of the church, we learn what real love is. And so we, we looked at this. Uh, the early church started in, in houses, and they, and they just began to grow. And they, they began to meet all over the place. And, and one of the things that we see, and I, I believe with conviction through John chapter 15 and John chapter 17, which we looked at last week, and I'll just bring up a real quick recap here. But we, we love each other with such unity. The scripture calls us to do this. And every time I look at this, I'm, I, I just, I look at it with amazement that, that when we, we're called to love with such force, with such radical love for one another, that, that it convinces people that don't know God that he is God. I mean, that's huge. John chapter 17, Jesus, he says, I pray that they will be one. He He's praying that you and I, the church, will be one. Just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. This is amazing amounts of unity. This amazing amounts of love that creates this conviction in other people. Gosh, that must be God. There must be a God. And then he goes on, and uh, well, actually before that, he says this in, in, in John chapter 15, that that's only possible, that kind of love for one another is only possible through this nourishing love that empowers us. Look at verse 10 and 11 in, in chapter 15. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands. For I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. A lot of times we are empowered by the good things that we do. We think, God, God is happy with me because of the good things that I do. And then it kind of encourages us and we think that's nourishing our hearts. But really, we are to be nourished and empowered by his love and nothing else. And in that love, in that empowering that he gives us through his spirit, guess what? That's where our love overflows for one another. And he goes on to say, my purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy that I experience will fill your hearts with over." flowing gladness, regardless of, of, of our circumstances. And so today what I want to do is I want to continue the same line, line of thought and what it means to love one another. It's much more than just some simple words. I love iced coffee or, uh, you know, that, that, you know I, love, I love my AC or something like that. You know, it's much more profound than that. I look at this story in Luke chapter 10. I'll have you guys turn your Bibles there or your devices we're going to look at a story that for you, some of you it's going to be familiar. Others, maybe this is a new story for you. But I'm, but I'm going to tell you parts of the story. I'm going to read parts of the story. But, but in the end, and I'm going to move through this quickly, I want to pull out a few principles in this to have, have us think about and process some questions about the story. And the story is about the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan. Everybody say, Good Samaritan. And so this Good Samaritan, Jesus, he's, he's, he shows this parable to he, he, he tells the story to show what radical love is, what, what profound love is. He was asked by a, a teacher of the Jewish religious laws. He's asked by a teacher, he says, teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? What am I supposed to do in order to, to be saved? What am I supposed to do to have eternal life? And Jesus answers, he says, what, what does the religious law say? And the man answers from Scripture. He says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as well, as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, you answered this correctly. And the guy, he wanted to justify himself, says, well, who's my neighbor? Just so that we, we are clear on who my neighbor is. Who's my neighbor? And Jesus, he goes into this parable. He goes into this story about the Good Samaritan. He tells a story about a Jewish man who is walking from, from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he happens to come upon some robbers. They beat him up. They steal his stuff. They strip him of everything. And they leave him on the, on the side of the road bleeding out, maybe for dead. And here comes a priest a Jewish priest comes by, sees a man bleeding out, and goes, crosses the road to the other side, and just keeps on going. He doesn't help the guy out. And then a little bit later, a Levite comes by, does the same thing. A Levite was a person who kind of helped on the temple affairs. And, and, and the, this Levite, he walks, he walks past as well. It'd be kind of like saying, um, Pastor Bob uh, was walking by, this priest. He's walking by, and he sees 
This bleeding man, Pastor Bob sees this bleeding man and keeps walking by, right? That's kind of like saying the same thing, right? Or, or, and, then, and then an intern, Jose, walks by and he's like, oh, I'm not going to help that person, right? That's kind of what this is saying here. And then it goes on to say this. Then a despised Samaritan, it's like they turn on this like music, like dun, dun, dun. A despised Samaritan came along and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. Right, just a little bit of context with this. The Samaritans, they were hated by the Jews. They, they just did not, there are two people groups that did not get along. They were, they, they were considered as like less than dogs by Jewish people. The reason for that was because Jewish people, sometimes they would defect from, from their people and they would marry non-Jewish people. And so then all of a sudden they had these, these half-offspring, these half-breeds, half the Samaritans. And so Jewish people hated Samaritans. They did not like each other. And what Jesus is doing, he's making this point that, that, that we're to love, these Jewish people are to love people regardless of how different they are. And, I, and the same point, point goes for us today, is that we're to love regardless of age or race or economic differences or whether you like the Steelers or the 49ers or the Cowboys. We love them anyways. I know it's a little bit difficult, but we love them anyways. And he's telling us, if he were to tell us this story today, if Jesus was here and he was telling us the story that, that a pastor walked by and then an intern walked by, but then the, this ISIS member helped the man who was robbed and bleeding out on the side of the road, or this Nazi member helped out this man for whatever reason. It, Jesus was creating tension, making the point, look, that's who your neighbor is. It's people that are completely opposite from, from who you are. And I want to say this. I know that maybe, maybe the context of this text and what I'm saying about us loving one another, maybe it doesn't fit completely right, but I think that's what radical love is, ought to be. That as believers, we got to be radically loving one another. And as we radically love one another, we become a force of love that others look at, the, at, at this thing and say, oh my goodness, there's got to be a God. Jesus asked the man, he says, which of these men proved to be the neighbor to this man? And he replies, the one who showed mercy. He couldn't even say the Samaritan. He, he couldn't even say, he says, the one that showed mercy. And then Jesus says, go do likewise. This force of love, this radical love that we see here, I see three principles. And again, I'm going to go through quickly on them. And I want us to dialogue and process them on our own, maybe right after service or, or, or maybe during lunch but you guys get to decide this. And I have a bunch of questions as I, as I line these out. I have a bunch of questions for you. The story shows us that there's this overflow from this kind of love, that overflow that allows us to have, to honor, to greatly honor someone, to have great mercy for someone. And then when, when we have this kind of love as we're honoring someone greatly and we're bringing great mercy towards someone, it creates this unbreakable bond in unity. Right, Jesus is showing us that John chapter 15 and 17, that, that as we love that way with this honor and mercy creates unity, it's a testimony convincing the world of who he is. So first thing I just want to say is there's two things. The first thing is to honor greatly is to love greatly. To honor greatly is to love greatly. He honored the man even though Jews and Samaritans don't get along. He spent his resources. He took care of him. He poured oil on him fixed his wounds, bought him supplies, even though they were bitter enemies. He did this for them. When I think of honor, I think of seeing Jesus in people, regardless of where they come from, what their background is, what their beliefs are. I see, I, I try to imagine Jesus in that person. Sometimes it doesn't work because sometimes, you know, I, I'll mistreat people. I, you know, I, I goof it up. I, I'm, I'm a knucklehead sometimes. I'll forget to call people back or email people back. Sometimes I'll, I'll even make bad faces about them behind their backs. And, uh, and <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. But, uh, but, but sometimes I just don't treat people the way that, I'm, that, I, that I want. Like, I want to see the Jesus in every person. I bet you anything, if Jesus called me, I, you believe, believe me, I would be calling him back. Why don't I treat everyone that way? Right? Honoring someone is finding Christ in them. Genesis chapter 1, 
It says, God created human beings in his own image. And I love what Romans, Paul says in Romans chapter 12 in the Passion Translation. He says, be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor for one another. Respect and honor of one another. Outdo yourselves. I mean, that, that, that to me sounds like a competition. What would it look like? if we try to outdo ourselves respecting and honoring each other. Like, I'm, I'm going to try and beat you at how, how much you respect me. I'm going to respect you even more. If you honor me, I'm going to honor you even harder. Like, we're, I'm gonna, we're going to go at this, right? Like, what would it look like for us as a church to do that for one another? I think people would see that and be like, what is going on here? I want to be a part of that. That looks like a lot of fun because these people really, really care about each other. They're really honoring each other, really respecting one another. I think sometimes we confuse love with being liked. We think that if someone likes us, we did an effective job of loving them. And I think, I think we, we stop short at really honoring people and really respecting people because we think, oh, that person likes me. I've done my job. I wonder what it would look like if we just went for it all out. And it brings conviction just me saying this, these things right now because I wonder, man, I have an opportunity every single day, people around me. I have, I have coworkers and, and interns and people that are around me. And I, do I do this? Do I effectively just outdo myself in honoring and respecting them? I don't know. I don't think so. I want to ask, what would that look like for you? I mean, for me, I think I, think I, I need to be more intentional in what I say maybe writing notes, maybe do, just doing things that, that really shows honor and respect. and that, that, I believe, is seen as love. What about you? Maybe it is, maybe it is something that you, you do write a note or you, t- you ask, invite someone to on a meal or you, or you pray for someone or you share a word from God. You feel like God has placed something in you. Like, I think the ultimate way to honor someone and, and, and really outdo yourself in honor is, is saying what God is saying to you about them. And a lot of times we, we stop short because we don't want to make a mistake or sound like we're dumb or, like, or, 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 or sound kind of goofy or, or weird by saying, hey, I believe, I believe this is a word for you or th- this might be an encouragement for you. I, I, what, if, what if you said, you know what, I'm going to put those things aside and I'm going to listen to this small, still voice and I'm going I'm to walk towards this person as God would walk towards this person and deliver this message to them. That would honor someone. So we honor. To, to honor someone to honor someone greatly is to love them greatly. The other thing that I see here is to show mercy and compassion is to love greatly. To love, to love someone greatly, we show mercy and compassion. This, don't, this one is tough sometimes because we don't know when people are hurting. We don't know when exactly to, to administer mercy Right? And compassion. So, but we don't know that. This, in this story, it's obvious the man is bleeding out on the side of the road. Right, It's obvious. He's hurting. But sometimes, man, we, a lot of us, we die secret deaths while wearing beautiful, wonderful smiles. What if we began to say, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to open up and I'm going to allow people in. What if, what, if, what if we trusted the God and others enough to let them see that we're bleeding out? What if, what if, what if we, we, we trusted the Jesus and other people of the church to ask for help? And I know people let us down, man. People in churches let us down all the time. They're just people. But what if we just began to say, you know what, I, I wanted to believe the best in that person. So even if they make a mistake in the way that me, I'm opening myself up to this person, they, they, they don't treat it right or, or they don't love me right, I'm still going to trust the Jesus in them somehow to help me. What if we began to walk that way? What happens is to trust others in that way is to love them as you're offering them something, right? And then, and then what happens is we have a, a chance. I have a chance. If you open yourself up like that towards me or if I open up myself towards, like that towards you, there's a chance for, for you to do something. There's a chance for us to, to, to respond to that. And there's more love and it begins to be reciprocated and something beautiful happens. There's a while, a while back I was sitting around a table of pastors and I, I, I took a risk. I went for it. I said some things. I said, hey, here's, here's where I'm at. 
And, and I just opened up. I was transparent. And what happened next was very shocking to me. And it made me kind of laugh a little bit. But, but, but God showed me later what, what just something really great. But, I, but I, shared, I shared some things in this group of pastors. And a little bit later, they're like, they all one by one kind of dropped out like flies. Like, I think my mom is calling. Like, uh, I, there's dinner on the table. And they just all kind of like faded away. Like, they all just kind of went. And I just sat there by myself. And I thought, oh my gosh, like that hurts, right? That hurts. It did not feel good. So if, if you go to churches around, around town, um, those pastors are mean. That's what, they, that's what they did to me, okay? So don't go to any other church. Just kidding. What was awesome is later on, um, in fact, even that day, um, a few of them came back and said, hey, man, I'm really thankful that you said something, and um, I'm, I'm in it with you as well. Like, I'm there. We're in the same boat. How do we help each other? And so we got to, let's, let's risk things, right? Let's, let's keep on risking, right? Let's keep on risking like, hey, I'm bleeding out. Will you guys help? And some really cool things will happen when we do that, that sort of thing. Some really cool things will happen when we begin to show mercy and compassion. Some really cool things will happen. And, and, and God is revealed to that. We got to get close. Close enough that they see our pain and close enough that we see their pain. Like we got to get close, close enough to see my pain and, and close enough to, that I can see your pain. And that's what the church is supposed to be. we, we got to know each other's story. we got to love each other. Mother Teresa, you know, she did a lot of work with homeless people in Calcutta and different parts of the world, just very, very just sad, poor places. And she says this, she says, spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. I love that. What I love about her work, if you know anything about it, is that when she loved, she, she loved no matter who you were, like no matter how bad you smelled. Like the places where she went where, where people were dying. You know, people were dying with leprosy. They're infected. They're, people are just sitting out dying. They're infected. They're nasty. They smell, but she loved them. She got close to them enough that their smell came up upon her. She says this, do not think that love in order to be genuine has to be extraordinary. She's basically saying just be there no matter how infected someone is, how infected someone seems to be, be there. And I think that same thing needs to go for us. No matter how infected we think we are or how infected we think other people are, how bad we think they smell spiritually or whatever, we just be there for someone. You know, think about like being in this situation with where everyone else has left you because you're infected and you're nasty and you're going to die anyway and just you're left out to die and yet someone showed up. Did you ever feel that way? Like I'm all alone. No one sees me. No one, no one knows my pain. And I think God, he's saying, I want, it, I want the church to be a place, not just for the unbelievers to feel loved and seen, but for the believers to be seen and loved. And in honoring each other in that way and loving each other and respecting each other, outdoing ourselves in, in that, God is revealed. And having mercy and compassion like this, like this, this Samaritan did, People see God in that. People see God through that. We gotta love one another. Who are you close to? Who are you allowing, allowing just people to see you? Who are you letting in? And I think just as important as that is who are you inviting in? Sometimes we're just waiting, waiting until someone says, hey, you come over. Why don't, why, how, why don't, why don't you go? I remember the first time I became a believer, I was so surprised at the level of openness and transparency that I saw in the group of guys that I was a part of that I, somehow God put me with. And I began to grow in my transparency. I began to grow in my desire to be seen and to, to see others. Will you be seen? Can, can you ask God to give you hunger to be seen? Will you ask God to give you a hunger to, to see others for who they really are? Because again, if scripture is right, if what Jesus is saying is correct, and I believe it is, that in the way that we love one another, in the way that we walk together in unity, God will be revealed 
to the world of who he is. And within our church and within the whole church, as marriages are struggling, there's difficulty in parenting, there's difficulty in being lonely. Some of us aren't parents, you know, and, and it, life is hard. It gets complicated. Let's not do life alone. We got to be radical in the way we love, radical in the way that we are unified. And in that, God is seen. As I close, this kind of love, outdoing each other in honoring, this kind of love in the way that we show compassion, it changes lives. It changes lives. And it creates unity and a bond that, man, people say, I want to be a part of that. Non believers will say, I want to be a part of that. But that's not the only reason why we do it. We, we do it because it changes us and it, it gives us life and allows us to see God in a clear way. I'm going to pray. Um, we're going we're gonna to put some of these questions and more questions that I have prepared online so that you'll be able to dialogue and discuss. I'm going to pray and then we're going to close up and you're going to enjoy the rest of your Father's Day today. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the, your word. Lord, I pray that that we have this hunger to, to see others, to know others, and to be seen. Because in that, Lord, there is healing. In that transparency, in that openness, there is hope and joy and a greater, greater revelation of who you are, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for our sins. Thank you that you, you poured out your spirit for us, that we may walk empowered and nourished by your love to be a church it is a force of love, radical love for others, for one another. We thank you, Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. Well, a couple of ways to respond today is, is looking at some of the questions that I already asked throughout this message. Uh, consider those. Talk during, during a meal today. Talk about those things with your family or with, with loved ones that you're spending time with. Talk about those, those things. Another way to respond is... You're saying, I want that kind of love. I want, to, I, I want to experience this love from God. I want to experience this kind of love with people. I think the first step really is to, to invite Jesus into your lives. If you have not done that, this is the time. The most important thing, the most important yes in your life is to say yes to Jesus. Even if you don't know anything about the Bible or the church or anything like that, like the most important thing to say is, God, I'm surrendering my life to you. So will you do that today? Will you do that and let us know that you're doing that? Go to hcc.church slash connect and let us know I'm giving my life to Jesus. And tell someone. Tell someone, hey, I gave my life to, I'm giving my life to Jesus. Tell someone about that. And see the cool things that God wants to continue to deposit into your life. We love you guys. Have a great day. Take care. Thanks, Pastor Angel. I'm Bob Horn. I'm the executive pastor here at Hope Tri-Cities. Thanks for joining us today on the live stream. And again, happy Father's Day to all of you dads and spiritual dads. And uh, we love you. We bless you. Pray that this is a really good day for you. Um, here at Hope Tri-Cities, we exist to unleash hope in the Tri-Cities and beyond by loving God, loving people, and living like Jesus. That's what we're all about. So if you're new to Hope Tri-Cities, um, we just want to say welcome. Glad you're here. You know, go on to htc.church slash connect and let us know that you're here. Let us know that, um, that you're, you're joining us and let us know how we can connect you, help you get connected, answer any questions you have about hope or about our, about our community. The other thing too I want to let you know is that if you need any prayer for anything at all, you can go to htc.church slash prayer and we'll connect you with somebody to pray if you'd like or we'll just take your prayer request and we'll lift it up before the Lord and pray for you. I want to thank you, too, for your generosity. So many people over this last um, few months have just continued to support Hope Tri-Cities and be generous with your giving. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for your sacrificial giving. And if you are supporting Hope Tri-Cities, if this is your home, I want to encourage you to continue that. Um, or if you're new and you want to start giving, you can do that very easily. Just go to htc.church slash give. You can give online. It's safe and secure. You can also text to give. The number's on your screen. Or you can give with a check and drop it off at the church. And the address is on the screen or drop it in the mail. I want to pray for you and pray for God's blessing on you as you give. God, thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving your very, very best to us, Jesus, your son. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to live generous lives that you would help us to live with our hands open to receive and to give. And I pray, God, that you would bless those as they give this week. Thank you, God, for your generosity to us. May we live generous lives for you and for your glory. In Jesus' name. Well, have a great Father's Day. God bless. We'll see you next time.